Have you wondered about the difference of squares? Have you wondered about perfect square trinomials? You have? Well, you're in luck. We're gonna be doing a CUDA worksheet tutorial on factoring special cases. This isn't the normal way of factoring a trinomial. Some of these aren't even trinomials, so I'm gonna show you how to do it, why it works, and kind of some tips for doing it quickly, okay? Now, this first one, we notice that there's no greatest common factor between these two terms, okay? So there's nothing to factor out. We notice that this is not a perfect square trinomial. Or sorry, this is not a trinomial. So we can't do our normal method where we find the factors of the first term, put it there, this, the last term, put it there, and then the sum, okay? Because there's no middle term to have a sum. So what do we do with this? Well, this is difference of squares. Anytime you recognize that this first term is a perfect square, and this second term is a perfect square, and this is the critical part, there has to be a minus sign in between. This is called difference of squares. So this is difference, meaning subtraction of squares, meaning two perfect squares. Now, why is 16n squared a perfect square? Because we can take the square root of 16n squared and we can get an integer, a non-decimal. So here we're gonna get 4n, okay? Same deal with the nine. If we take the square root of nine, what do we get? We get three. Notice how it's not a decimal. These are the building blocks of uh, this factorization. So we're gonna put our parentheses and you're gonna use two parentheses, two binomials for the difference of squares. Now, simply what you do is you're gonna take the square root of the first term, you're gonna put it there and there, okay? The square root of the first term. Then you're gonna put the square root of the second term, or the last term, I guess it doesn't really matter, put it there and there. So you just copy down the square root of, hold on, let me show you. This guy, put it here and here. Then you take the square root of the second guy, second term, put them here and here. You make one positive, you make one negative, and you're done. So how does this work? Well, let me put my parentheses again. Okay, that was my blueprint. Here's my actual answer for number one. I'm gonna put four N, I'm gonna put four N, put it twice. Then I'm gonna put three, and then I'm gonna put three, and then I'm gonna make one positive and one negative, and I'm done. That's all there is to it. Now, why does this work? Well, if we go ahead and foil this, so let me show you the foil, okay? We're gonna do these four, no, sorry. That's 16 N cubed, sorry, squared, minus 12 N. And then we're gonna do underneath. Okay, I guess I'll just use purple. So then we have plus 12 n uh, minus nine. Notice how normally we get a middle term by combining these two in the middle here, the outside and inside terms that we multiply. Well, here they're gonna cancel each other out and we're just gonna be left with 16 n squared minus nine, which is what we started with. So we know this works for that reason. And this is gonna work every time because these are gonna cancel each other out with the positive and the negative. Okay, that's why one is positive and one is negative. So here's our answer to that one, okay? Now, we're gonna use this right here over and over again, this little format. So if you want, go ahead and pause this or copy and paste it and take it with you. Okay, maybe I'll do that. I'm gonna copy it just so I can take it with us. Pack them in our suitcase. Let's take them with us, okay. Moving on to the second one. We recognize that first is this difference of squares, okay? We have uh, two terms. One is a perfect square, the first one. The second one's a perfect square, and it's subtraction in between. It's the difference, so we're good to go. First, we're gonna take our square root of 4m squared, and then we're gonna take our square root of 25, and we need to find both those values to input into our format. So we get 2m, and we get five. Now, how did I do 2m? You just take the square root of the four, then you take the square root of the m squared, and that's m. Okay, so that's how you do that in case you're wondering how I did that quickly. Then I'll put my parentheses down and simply I copy down the 2M. Since this is the first one, it goes in the first slot for both these parentheses. Since this guy is the second one, different color, this one. Second one, we're gonna put him in the second spot and we just make one positive and one negative and we're done. That's all there is to it. Okay, so difference of squares, let's do, let's do another one. Okay, for example, this guy, we're gonna use all purple this time. Square root of the this first one goes here and here. That's 3x, 3x. Square root of one, one is the perfect square. It's one and one. Square root of one, it's one. 
Make one positive, one negative. There you go. That's all there is to these perfect square uh, problems. Most of these are pretty easy on this first page at least. Um, looking for tougher ones. Sometimes you might need to factor out something. Uh, looks like this one real quick. Uh, this one's just going to be 1 plus r and then 1 minus r. So this time the variable's in a different spot. This one, you'll notice, this is a great, great example to end on for the perfect squares. Uh, difference in squares, sorry. You'll notice that neither of those are perfect squares, but 343 is divisible by 7. So we're going to divide that by 7 first. Okay, we're going to take out the GCF. So this one we're going to use a GCF before difference of squares, and that's 7. So we factor out that. And what's left inside? Well, it's 49b squared minus b to the fourth. Now we have difference of squares here. So we have 7. Okay, and then this is kind of like what I did before. Not kind of, it's exactly what I did before. This is my first spot, and I get 7b and 7b, and I just plop him down twice. Then this is my second slot. I usually use, I'll use the darker green. Okay. And I put b squared, and I put b squared. I'm going to make one positive and one negative, and I'm done. And that's all there is to it. Sometimes you might have difference of squares again. Like, for example, if this were um, if this were 16b to the fourth, this would be another difference of squares, and you could expand this further. Okay, this is just if you have one of these problems. You could expand this further into another difference of squares, like 4b squared. Uh, plus b and then 4b squared minus b and then you'd also have this from the beginning that you can't factor further in there but that's just a, an example it's not the case here so i just wanted to show you just in case you had a tougher problem like that now we're going to move on to perfect square trinomials i wanted to put my original answer there okay original answer so we also have perfect uh, square trinomials and what this is about is it factors into a perfect square um, so if you're looking at this one, uh, and you recognize that you have a perfect square here and you have a perfect square here, uh, this might be a perfect square trinomial. Okay. So what you can do here with these ones, you can just factor like normal. Uh, and I have other videos on how to factor quadratics, but you can notice here that we have perfect squares for both. So it might be perfect square trinomial. So we're going to put five and five, the square root, the square root. And this time, because there's three terms, we're going to look at the middle term, okay? Uh, we're also going to look at the last term. If the last term's positive, that's good. That's a good indication that's a, a, this has to be positive for it to be a perfect square trinomial. So let me write that down. Perfect square trinomial. That has to be positive. Obviously, there has to be three terms prefer, for a perfect square trinomial. And then if this is minus, that means both of these are minus. Now, we got to check to see if this, in fact, adds up to 40 when we FOIL it. So we're definitely going to get 16b squared when we do the first term times the first term. We're definitely going to get positive 25 when we do last times last. Really, the only ones you need to do are the outside and the inside terms. So we get negative 20b and then negative 20b. Together, they add up to negative 40b. So this is the correct factorization of uh, this trinomial. Now... You should notice, this is why it's called a perfect square trinomial, that we wrote the same thing twice, 4b minus 5. Because we wrote it twice, it's times itself twice, then we can simply call this squared. And that's our final answer. It's a perfect square trinomial because that's, that's squared. Another way to figure out that this is a perfect square trinomial is if this middle term is double the product of the first square root and the last square root, okay? So what do I mean by that? This uh, perfect square trinomial is in the form of a squared plus 2ab uh, plus b squared, okay? This is your perfect square trinomial. I should write that in green. Another format for it is... Uh, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And this is the, actually the case for this one. So those are our two like formats for it. And all that means is this middle part needs to be the product of the square root of the first one. So this was 16b squared times the square root of 25 and then double that. So this was 4b, this was 5, and then double that. Is that true? Well, we get 2040b here. So yes, that was true. 
this is how you know it's a perfect square tri trinomial is if those characteristics reign true. So we can check this one. We can check the square root of this guy and the square root of this guy. The square root of this guy is square root of four x squared equals two x. This guy is one, square root of one equals one. Now if we multiply two x times one and then double it, we should get four uh, x. And we do, we get four x. So this is a perfect square trinomial also. So we can go two x, that's our first term. Because this middle term is minus, we're gonna make it minus one, and then we're square it, and there's our answer, okay? Now, if you're not cons if you're like a little worried, oh my gosh, I, I don't know how you do that so quickly, you can always take it back to the basics and then do your normal factoring from here. Put your factor of one in the second slot, put your factors of four x squared in this first slot, so you could be two x and two x, and then we're just looking for combinations that give us a negative 4x when we multiply our outside and inside terms. In that case, it's minus minus. It times itself twice, so we can write it as 2x minus 1 quantity squared because it's multiplied by itself twice. We're going to end with one more. Um, so we can, first let's just, take the square root of this first term and last term to see if it's a perfect square trinomial. Technically, there's a greatest common factor. We could factor out an m squared, and this actually will make it easier for us. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a GCF, make this problem smaller. I don't think two, uh, 200 is divisible by eight, actually. So we'll factor out. We're gonna factor out an eight m squared to make this smaller. Once we do that, we get 25 m squared plus 10 m and then plus one. Okay, so now we're gonna look here, is this and this, okay, do, are those perfect squares? Yes, they both are perfect squares. Now we wanna know is the sum of the square roots, or the product of the square roots, okay, this equals 5m, this equals one. Are it 5m times one, and then doubled, is that equal to, whoops, wrong one, 10m, and it is, it's 10m. So we know this is a perfect, uh, square trinomial, we're gonna have 5m plus one, everything's plus, so it's gonna be plus, squared, don't forget the eight out in front, and there's your final answer. So kind of just a quick way to do this, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions, please let me know. I will do my best to help you. I hope you enjoy this video. I think I already said that, but watch some more. I appreciate it, thank you.